Hello everyone. Welcome to the Digitech Dialogue. I am Arpit Gupta. The Digitech Dialogue series is an initiative of ET Government, the Economic Times. This is an interactive show with bureaucrats on different milestones in their digital transformation journey. In this series, senior government officials give an insight of digital innovations and use of new technologies by their department or the ministry. Today, on behalf of ET Government, I welcome Mr. Akash Deep, Commissioner and Secretary, Public Health Engineering Department. Mission Director, Jaljeeval Mission, Director, Directorate of Information Technology, Electronics and Communications, Government of Assam. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. For the audience, Mr. Akash Deep is a 2005 batch IS officer of Assam Meghalaya cadre and currently serving as the Commissioner and Secretary of PHED Department, MD of Jaljeevan Mission, MD of Swachh Bharat Mission, CEO of Flood and River Erosion Management Agency of Assam called FREMA in the Water Resources Department. He is also the in charge director of information technology, electronics, and communications, DITEC, in the government of Assam. Prior to this, he worked in Uttar Pradesh government on the inter cadre deputation from 2015 to 2020, where he was posted as DM Lakhim Purkiri, Director Panchayati Raj, Mission Director Swachh Bharat Mission and Special Secretary, Finance, etc. He has also served as DC of Reboi, Director, Community and Rural Development Department, State Project Director, Service Shiksha Abhiyan, and held other key portfolios in the Meghalaya government between 2009 and 2015. Mr. Akashdeep hails from Unnao district of Uttar Pradesh and did BTEC in Electrical Engineering from IIT Kanpur in 2001. I once again welcome you, Mr. Deep. Let's begin the conversation. My first question to you is, state governments have been implementing administrative reforms, including national e-governance plan and digital India initiatives for more than a decade now. The government of Assam is working to provide better IT infrastructure and internet bandwidth in partnership with private players to make digital Assam a reality. How are your plans to digitally connect every village in the state progressing? Thank you, Mr. Gupta ji. As you know that, uh... Assam is a gateway to northeast, northeastern states in India. And uh, connectivity in Assam, be it physical or digital, they are very, very crucial for this area and country as a whole. Physically, there have been various uh, steps taken in the last few years and decades. And now Assam is very well connected, uh, either through rail or road. Digitally also, we are leaping forward. Assam has uh, shown a lot of progress and the uh, thing that Assam has been connected well digitally has also benefited the surrounding neighboring states, for example, Arunachal, Nagaland, Manipur, and Meghalaya. Uh, presently, uh, we have uh, uh, what is known as Assam State Wide Area Network Program. Now, this is this was launched in 2009, and it is a common information highway for all e-governance application in Assam. It's a three tire network covering all district subdivisional and block level uh, offices in the Assam, state of Assam. Now, at present, the figure is there with me, uh, around 1000 government offices are connected through this bandwidth of S1, which the bandwidth available is up to 100 Mbps and a lot of e-business in government sector is being done through this network. And we have plans of augmenting it further through various interventions. Knowledge network is there, Bharat Net is there, and other international in the, the gateways for internet. Also, we are thinking of augmenting its capacity at various levels. Right, sir. You talked about the statewide area network. There are other initiatives like Sugam e district, state data center, common service centers, e office, e prastuti, etc. There are several other ICT projects which are responsibilities of the Director of Information Technology, Electronics and Communications of Government of Assam. How are you aligning with the growing demand for technology adoption in the government? Yeah, as you rightly mentioned that the government of Assam has taken a lot of initiatives very recently. We have the state of the art of uh, state of the art uh, state data center recently, which has been commissioned and it is hosting all the requirements of various department for doing uh, government to citizen services, be it application uh, server requirement or be it the, the, the data requirement or the backend data storage requirement. We, I, I will say that uh, uh, with the onset of our recent government, an honorable chief minister is very, very uh, pers persistent of using applications in government businesses, 
be it from government to citizens or between government to government uh, for example as you said ki if e uh, e office system now there has been initiatives taken very recently that the offices starting the honorable cm has decided that the secretariat will be the hub and the starting point for implementation of e office here in assam and this be, this is going to be rolled out in collaboration with the nic where each and everyone will be trained they will be issued digital certificates they will be trained on this module of handling files and other uh, communications where decisions has to be taken uh, digitally through 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 online system so these steps are been taken our next phase is going to extend this to the district level and uh, i am very hopeful this is the road map as far as uh, making office in a digital manner the state government is very very serious uh, regarding uh, application based or the, the server based various in initiatives taken here the industries department is doing ease of doing businesses where services has been identified and there will not be requ requirement of any person to come to any office physically and all the things have to be done virtually and the services will be delivered virtually be it licenses permissions of across various departments 30 to 40 departments i have a long list which i can share similarly there is another initiative here taken as artps assam right to public service commission the services to uh, citizens are to be given in a matter of uh, as a matter of right and to provide to achieve that objective di uh, digitalizing and making services online uh, digital literacy providing the required infrastructure is a very very crucial step i think uh, this ease of doing business and subsequently adoption of right to public services are going to be very important milestone where we can we are infusing technology to give these services to the uh, citizens sir covid has also accelerated the adoption of digital technologies in a big way so how does this pandemic help fast tracking digital transformation in assam government can you elaborate a few examples and what is the future of e governance in assam situation of uh, covid you as you said has given uh, a platform rather a uh, uh, requirement was felt ki those who should not or cannot come to office but still work has to go on and uh, to bridge this gap of a person being there physically and a person who is expected to receive some service from the office the use of digital technology and uh, online uh, systems definitely are very important for example as you said in recent covid situations various in initiatives were taken for example online passes of vehicle movement were issued by districts which uh, the application was developed and through this various uh, people in whether be emergent uh, they have some emergency or they have some other issues they were they were getting passes and they were tracked similarly uh, you already know that state government has started taking various meetings through online mode this is also one of the very big changes because either we are in office like we are right now i am speaking to through this virtual mode or we are there in our homes also during that lockdown period but certain things have to go on the government has to provide for uh, its citizens the care and the security and the services during that time so these online meetings will be very very, very crucial at the time right sir my next question to you is in the state of assam railtel has completed the work of deploying an artificial intelligence based identification system for capturing attendance and management of sdmis called student database management information system for 48000 government schools how ditech is uh, empowering the students and teachers in the areas of ict and digital literacy and bridging the digital gap yes definitely the directorate for information technology here in assam has provided support to this initiative uh, under samagra shiksha abhiyan so we have done the selection of the agency which was which has actually rolled out this program for the department and we have we were involved in technically evaluating the agencies so that uh, this student database management information system can be developed in a in a way that it is very robust and it is it is very effective i am very happy that being in this department in this director of information technology we help uh, education in this sector also we have hosted their uh, database in our assam state data center this is one of the initiative which you have mentioned we are doing it for all other departments for example let me give you very recently honorable cm has uh, driven an initiative known as mission vasundhara where the land record and digital management of land, land records is going to be uh, you know it, it is going to be transformed where the the mass will be digitalized 
the operations will be there the issuance of necessary land documents be it possession certificate partition etc this was a huge uh, there was a huge uh, you know backlog the services were, were not delivered on time so this project has been envisaged by the revenue department and we are there in line to with them to support them in this initiative we have assessed the requirement of how much space they will need for the application server for their database server we have provided them in the state data center and also if required we'll be engaging them in selection of such agencies which can perform the task as required by the uh, revenue department so these are the two examples similarly we are serving for across all the government all the departments of the government as and when their requirements comes we are there to help them out right sir let me also understand the uh, policy benefits to the investors given by your government sir the information technology and electronics policy of assam is aimed at creating the right atmosphere for the it its esdm sector in the state with the ongoing it reforms do you see the atmosphere for investment in assam is becoming conducive and receptive and going forward what are your priorities for the current fiscal year okay so let me give you brief uh, introduction brief about the information technology and electronic policy of assam 2017 which was rolled out uh, it has got basically four kind of uh, uh, four main pillars this policy document of assam has got e services now it it e services e governance e transformation and promotion of information technology and uh, its and these industries and the software and development industries in assam now when i when i talk about promotion of it and uh, software development uh, agencies we focus on creating enabling environment for growth of information technology and such companies where they can come here do some investment do some research and make a have to get they get an atmosphere be it manpower so that they can enable themselves in creating these softwares we are trying to create that atmosphere be it infrastructure uh, from the infrastructure point b from the availability of technical manpower by uh, having such uh, you know skilled uh, manpower here in assam uh, and also it will help us in uh, getting our youth of this region you know clear cut direction that this is an avenue for them uh, we are also incentivizing and sub- subsidizing their initiatives of various at different levels which details can be given depending on the proposal the the, the industries or the companies are making to us uh, as far as second pillar is concerned that is e services we are focusing on ensuring electronic delivery of services to citizens as i mentioned through you know government to uh, citizens across all departments and therefore therefore we are promoting we are helping departments to develop such applications which are you know uh, uh, helping the uh, departments as well as well as citizens to get uh, to avail to make the services uh, readily available to the citizen few examples i have already given be it in ease of doing business where 30 to 40 services different departments and around 70 to 80 services has been identified which are provided fully on a digital platform similarly e governance where we are developing core it infrastructure for delivery of e services for example we have a state of the art state data center we are increasing the bandwidth of the present as one and bharat net and we are plan- we are planning to augment it further in the phase two of bharat net program and steps are being taken to increase it the bandwidth and also to increase the in- uh, international uh, internet gateway capacity which is presently limited around 33 tbps around 34 tbps of assam we are trying to increase it much further and uh, talks are going on uh, the dpr preparation is going on the firm has been already there and they are doing the job and also uh, the higher goal is for transforming this region the, what we call as e transforming if the re- need is there we 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 may also go for uh, redesigning the whole uh, government process to suit the to deliver the uh, services to the uh, citizens we have no uh, hesitation in reengineering those process or restructuring those process and therefore uh, we are uh, also undertaking a digital literacy pro- program for making 25 lakh rural citizens of the state digitally literate by 
2022 and to provide computer education in the state run schools we are collaborating with them sir as you are also handling the jal jeevan mission as the mission director and you are also the commissioner and secretary of public health and engineering department in the government of assam my next question to you is jal jeevan mission is the government of india's flagship mission aiming to provide piped water supply to every rural household which is being also implemented in assam so far a total of 12 lakh households have been provided with functional household tap connection against the target of 63 lakh to be achieved by 2024 what is the strategy to meet the remaining target over to you sir yeah so arpit ji it's a very good question let me first tell our listeners and viewers what jal jeevan mission is in brief jal jeevan mission is a government of india flagship program to provide fully functional household tap connection to every household now we call we call it in short fhtcs fully functional household tap connections now this piped water supply is required to provide for giving them safe and adequate drinking water as in ishar and visas in our sustainable development goal now this jal jeevan mission is a very very important mission because such kind of mission was never thought of it has been launched with this purpose of providing water to each and every household for the first time in all over country and assam in particular well we know assam has a lot of water but when we talk about potable drinking water there are issues we know that even though there is a surplus of water but availability of safe and drinking water was always a challenge and but since because of availability of lot of water there was a little uh, ignorance about this issue also i am very happy with the onset of this mission this has been this situation is changing and people are getting aware and thinking of getting piped water supply as a benefit for their health also in assam total number of households are 63 lakhs till date we have been able to give them around 12 lakhs which is almost 19 to 19 to 20% Uh, we are not very good at present because assam was a late starter while the country started at an average of 18 to 19% when this mission was launched the coverage assam was standing at very meager of 1.7% so as i told the reason was since the lot of water was available there was no awareness of that kind ki it has to be you know made available to pipe water so but i am very happy after the launch of mission in august 2019 and preparatory works are over we have achieved a progress of uh, around 10% around 10% of the total addition we have made uh, since the launch of the mission which is not very bad almost uh, last i i'll say uh, we will be like last tenth from the bottom <laughs> because uh, because of this situation we started even even below so we are adopting strategies of contacting out such schemes through contractors involved involving local uh, uh, populace local youth involving our uh, stakeholders the the villagers the households speaking to them conducting various exercises consultations are being taken uh, are being uh, you know uh, we are doing with them and based on their need and demand we are generating a demand and then we are providing this this is what our strategy is and there is a role of skill department as well uh, as we know that uh, the skill department has also been roped in for training the local youth to make them expert technicians what is the potential of employment avenues of skilled workforce do you see during the entire mission well, period well it's a major program and there are a lot many opportunities available now you can be the person who can build the scheme and you can get yourself registered as contractor either in the phd department or the pwd departments and after that we can panel you and we can give capacity are looking after your credentials and turnover and your financial stability further uh, these works require various skills for example we require quality masons which can you know have the civil works done we require those person who can stage steel casing for the overhead tanks or expert who can you know who are, who are good at uh, fabricating concrete structures or iron uh, specific works are required we require good plumbers we require good chemical suppliers we require good pipe manufacturers so there is a lot of uh, potential involved and i am very happy we are very inclusive in our approach 
whoever is willing to come we, we we check their credentials verify them and we found they are okay we impanel them and we also give them opportunity as and when it arises by the way we are we have also collaborated with our assam skills development mission and we are we are training uh, masons we are training plumbers we are training steel uh, this staging uh, these techniques uh, the laboratories field kits are available for testing this water and sampling and how to test the waters we are training uh, for rural folks also to our mission my next question to you is what are the key areas where you are leveraging technology in the phd department to ensure water quality monitoring and surveillance and what challenges do you face in adoption of technological interventions not only in water testing i'll i'll also cover other aspects of gjm where technology we are using the technology part as far as our this is a huge program and as one of the uh, focus area was in the first part of our introduction in, in our inter- the focus area was giving services monitoring the programs we have a software tool called smt where we cover every aspect of this jjm uh, starting from work allotment its progress the fund releases and uh, the inspections which are being carried out it is all there in a systematic monitoring system of jjm program and we do it no fund release is done without looking into the this monitoring software and it is all done digitally the money transfer is taking place directly from the agency from the, our parent account to the beneficiaries or to the, to the contractors account directly without any manual intervention is between and through online mode they all reported through online so this is one of the systems uh, using of digital technology here in phe as far as soil testing and quality is concerned we are a little late starter here we are revamping our laboratories we have got a system for monitoring the uh, water also a software module is there but uh, it will it will take little more time to roll on on this aspect where huge number large number of samples will be taken because as required uh, once in a year for chemical sample and twice in a year for bacterial sample we take and test them and we report it it was not there but we are going to do it in a very you know very soon third point i'll say to provide and to check whether the quality of water as envisaged in the program is there the, the sufficiency of water that is 55 liters per capita per day <coughs> is being provided there's a there's a system of providing sensors through iot internet of things where we'll be placing these sensors at all these locations of schemes and various crucial locations and the data will be collected and it will be analyzed and it will be checked this is in our pipeline it will be rolled out very soon and it it will help us in uh, understand how effective this system is going to be as far as quality of uh, quality of water is concerned as well as adequacy of water is concerned which has been provided to the household what is the long term strategy for sustainability of the water supply system in assam okay so uh, this is a very good question and a very challenging one also because laying the infrastructure is the easiest part to maintain it is the toughest so we are not only concerned about erecting the new infrastructure but we are also very much concerned how to maintain it so that it is there people they get used to of this infrastructure they they are involved in it so we are working at various levels first of all we involve the stakeholders in a very comprehensive way our agencies go there we discuss with the rural population we tell them why there is a need of having a pipe water supply how what are the health benefits and if you can spend 1 or 2 rupees per day uh, on your family per person that is what is the cost of getting a clean and safe drinking water so if a family of four they spend 5 rupees per day on some you know people do it some small things like pan tobacco or whatever here we, we tell them these things do they uh, harm your health but if you invest this 5 rupees per day around 100 to 150 rupees per month you are going to get a safe and drinking water so that they are also involved in the operation and maintenance of such schemes and they own it that is number one secondly we do we have made provisions for providing for operational expenses of such schemes through 15 finance commission 
इलेक्शन ऑफ पंचायती राज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मिनिस्टर ऑफ जल शक्ति हैज अर मार्क सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ फंड विच आर बींग डिवॉल्व विच आर बींग गिवेन टू पंचायत थ्रू फाइनेंस कमीशन ओनली फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ वॉटर एंड सैनिटेशन so this is a huge step where the importance of water and sanitation is being realized and it is being given so this money which will be available through panchayati raj from the finance commission side will be given to the panchayati raj institutions for such schemes of maintaining and uh, sustaining the uh, the pipe water schemes but also involving the the consumers we uh, even though there is a provision of providing uh, operating and maintenance but we will be involved in the stakeholders whether be very nominal contribution from their side but we will collect it so as to have ownership from their side of these schemes which will be very crucial for us sir while we are heading towards the end of our conversation i would also like to know as you are heading the swachh bharat mission in assam you are the mission director what are your challenges and what are your priorities in sbm well i was also mission director of swachh bharat in up as you already mentioned and now i am also looking after swachh bharat mission here in assam so i have i have had this opportunity of seeing the same program in two different states i think it is a unique feel for me swachh bharat mission has entered in its phase 2 everywhere in the country uh, where phase 2 involves odf sustainability as i talked about sustainability of pipe water schemes sustaining odf or clean behavior clean sanitation behavior is also very very crucial because the chances of slipping back where safe sanitation is not practiced are very very high and immediately after attaining odf which we call as open defecation free where nobody goes out to the field we have to continue our efforts to make that the behavior doesn't turn back and they again start going back to the fields we have to stop that that is why this concept of odf sustainability uh, has been introduced it requires construction of Uh, uh individual household uh, sanitary latrines for households which were left out or which has been added in these few years also construction of and promoting usage of community managed sanitary complexes for example a, a crowded hut a crowded local market or any other place religious places where there are a lot of people they are gathering we we require to have we, we are committed to give a very clean environment there also and therefore the construction of such sanitary complexes we see many places are not there we are making them the third pillar of this is solid and liquid waste management which is a very challenging issue we are trying assam generally has a very high sense of cleanliness awareness or alertness already it is there people are aware about uh, what the what are the benefits of being clean and hygienic and they do practice but we have to tell them in a way it becomes you know uh, more organized uh, for solid and liquid waste management we are trying for solid we are providing waste segregation for non uh, uh, by, for for non degradable items for example plastics or metals we are collecting them we have plants we have made plants for collecting them at village level or gp level and then subsequently it will be processed through rag pickers and other uh, back end uh, mechanisms we are making for liquid uh, management if it is a grey water that is a kitchen waste kitchen water uh, we are promoting them to make soap pits and uh, if uh, and subsequently uh, these are our plans as of now as far as uh, uh, sbm here in concerned and i am hopeful assam has done a good job in the last year in sbm i am sure we will be doing it again will be performing well here people do have a high sense of uh, understanding hygienic Uh, practices as i told and uh, i have no doubt ki will not be doing good good events right sir and thank you thank you uh, mr akash deep it was really a great interaction with you our sincere thanks to you for accepting our invitation and making today show wonderful we wish you all the best for your future endeavors thank you and i wish all the luck to everyone who is listening and seeing this thank you